Okay, um, I think uh, we are ready to start. So I would just like to say, first of all, thank you to everybody um, for coming along. We've had we've got a lot of people that are on the call at the moment. Um, the only people that you'll be able to hear and see are those guys that are the panelists. Um, however, if you look at the bottom of your screen, there's a chat options and there's questions and answers. Now, literally, um, every, every host that's on and that's going to do a presentation, they've literally got 10 minutes. So it needs to be quick. And when it's ready, I will take the screen away from them. Um, so they'll be cut off automatically and we'll move on to the next person. We will have a question and answer session at the end, though. Um, and if we have a break at the time... Um, you know, during the, during the 10 minutes, if we've still got time and we've got questions coming through, we'll, you know, we'll just do a question and answer session there as well. So please, anything you've got to say, um, send your question and, and answers in. So um, first of all, um, I would like to introduce Carol. Um, Carol, you're going to be our first speaker for the day. So thank you for coming on board. And um, yeah, if you want to share your screen and, and you know, tell us who you are and what we need to hear. Sorry, I'm just, yep, yeah, all good, ready to go. All right, now, um, Carol Hay um, used to be the director for the Caribbean Tourism Organization UK. Now I've got my own company, Mackenzie Gale, and we represent the CTO UK chapter. So I realize I've only got 10 minutes, so I've got to speak very quickly. And I had two presentations. One was my regular presentation, introducing you all to the Caribbean. But then I thought I would take it up a notch and instead share a presentation that I made um, yesterday to the Caribbean Council. And it's what's next for Caribbean tourism. Because I figured anything I could say about the destinations, my fellow speakers are gonna say. What I really wanted to do was to look at it from a serious, um, not, not that everything isn't serious, but from a real perspective as to what does a region do after something like this has impacted us and most importantly the role that the travel trade is going to play in helping us to recover so i'm going to whiz through because it is quite long and um, but um i think it's important really you know to look at the future of a region so if we look at the end of 2019 Caribbean, we, you know, when we looked at our tourism figures, we did well. Across the Caribbean, tourism grew by 4.4% and we welcomed over 31 million visitors to the Caribbean. In addition, um, on the cruise sector, we welcomed over 30 million visitors. So tourism was looking good. And if we look at the international markets, the, UK, the US did very well. Um, Europe dipped by about 1.4% and the UK was actually down by 5.6%. And we felt that that was largely due um, to Brexit and the uncertainty. So, of course, um, what did we expect um, for um, 2020? So I'm just trying to do something right on my screen. Just right, I've done it. Right. So what were the predictions for 2020? Well, we thought that tourism would grow by about 1.2%. And we realistically knew that there were some challenges we were going to face, environmental issues, sargassum, mosquito-borne um, issues. Um, we also knew that there was a bit of political unrest across the Caribbean. There were US restrictions because a lot of people fly by via the US. And of course, as all developing countries, you had to look at some of the issues. So that was what we were kind of expecting to face when we entered 2020. Hmm. Wasn't quite as we expected though, because instead, not only the Caribbean, but the world faced COVID and we had to really decide, well, how are we going to position ourselves? The world has shut down, airlines have stopped flying, cruise lines have stopped, our wonderful travel agents, partners, everyone has had to stop. And of course, the impact in the Caribbean is for the guest houses, for commerce, for education. When we looked at it globally, right across, the roles had switched and who we thought were going to be dominant wasn't. And instead, it, it's the ancillary and the auxiliary workers who are right now keeping the world going. So what does that mean for tourism in 2020? How is the Caribbean going to approach it, given the fact that we 
are one of the most tourism dependent regions in the world. So we've had to look at it. And like the UK market, we've kind of realized that domestic tourism will we'll grow first, that's what's gonna happen. And the same thing has been said in the UK. We've realized that the yachting sector will come back before the cruise industry. The cruise industry will take longer to return, but national tourist office, the tourist boards who you work with, they're gonna be called upon to deliver even more. Their role becomes even more important, even with budget cuts. And it's going to be really important that we strengthen the relationship between all the players in the tourism industry. So your clients, what's going to be important to them when they have the confidence to return to the Caribbean? Security, hygiene, health and safety will top the list. I think every single person is now going to be traveling with hand sanitizer and with their wipes. And this means that we in the Caribbean, we've got to look at those standards for your your clients because they're going to be asking you questions and we've got to ensure that we deliver. Um, standardization and certification will count. Sustainability, travelers are going to have a higher level of social conscience, particularly because they've seen who it is that is keeping the whole world together and they want to ensure that the environment is so protected now. Health, wellness and fitness is going to be important to visitors. Also, low season travels. We should be able to position a lot more people wanting to travel in the low season, which is excellent for destinations and excellent for the trade. There's going to be a higher demand for more personalized service and people are going to want from their Caribbean experience, authenticity, exploration, engagement and transformational experiences. So that's what we, the tourist boards and, and our hotel partners will need to deliver for you and your clients. If we look at um, the whole um, competitiveness now, well, right now it, it's, it's going to be highly competitive and it's going to be driven by price. It's also a buyer's market and you, the trade, will see that people will be shopping around because they'll know that many destinations are slowly opening up and they're going to want you, the agents, to provide them with the best for less. Now, we know that the, that the largest market, the USA, will take longer to recover, and we're confident that the UK will recover before the US market. So what that means is that you and us will have to ensure that we work to woo people away who, who are confident, you know, people who would consider traveling beyond the Mediterranean and the Middle East. We've then got to say, well, look, the Caribbean is open and this is what we've got. And of course, we're going to be competing against domestic tourism because a lot of people are going to say, do you know what? I think I'll go to the Channel Islands, the Cornwall, etc." So we've got to work hard to ensure that we uh, regain the confidence of consumers consumers. And um, we've got to realize that the position will change for 2021, fingers crossed. But at the same time, we're the ones who everyone is going to be turning to for our knowledge, our experience and their safety and well-being. Now, um, the 2019 collapse of Thomas Cook was a major game changer for scores of hotels across the Caribbean and some are still feeling the impact. And of course, when we add COVID to that, it means that um, it's, it's going to be a challenging time. But what we have to do in the Caribbean is to use a lot more automation, a lot more digital. We've got to ensure that we build relationships with the trade, we build relationships with the consumer, and we make it easy for you to be able to sell the Caribbean. There was an argument recently that trade shows have died, that we're not going to trade shows. Well, I'm going to encourage every single agent within the UK to, to please attend WTM, meet with the suppliers, meet with everyone, expand your network, and the rest of us who do international shows, we need to get out there because that's going to be important for growing business for all of us. One of the things that we've done is that we've launched um, a digital campaign, Caribbean being dreaming. If you're not following us, follow us now. It's really great for the trade and for the consumers. It's our soft approach to say to everyone, the Caribbean is waiting and it's received wonderful support. So um, marketing during a crisis, well, we, we have to take into account the, the very sad truth that people are dying and our essential services and workers, everyone is stretched. But at, at in, in, in going through all of that, 
we have to also help the world to plan the recovery because travel and tourism has such a, a, a place to play. So for all of us, whether it's the travel trade, whether it's the destinations, tone, tone, tone. We have to be, we have to have a soft sell approach. We have to inform, share, reassure and nurture. We've got to connect through social media. We've got to remind um, our clients of what is available when the time is right. For us, it's all about Caribbean dreaming and we're flooding the channels with comforting feel-good messages and we encourage you to share them with us so we keep reminding ourselves that it's caribbean strong and it could take months before consumers or even years before consu consumers feel a hundred percent um confident to travel and we know that the Caribbean attracts a number of older clientele. So we've got to really just help people to, to feel confident about it. And we know that there are many more opportunities in the Caribbean as well. For those of you who do mice, adventure, culture and heritage, health and wellness, the Caribbean can meet all the needs. And um, we just really need to just strengthen our whole global images. So, um, there are a few other things that the Caribbean will need to do. A lot of it is about how we work with the Caribbean community, ensuring that we continue to train people to work in tourism, ensure that we create opportunities for women and young people. They're talented and they can provide some of the most beautiful indigenous arts and crafts that your clients can bring back. And of course, we always want to be protecting the environment in the Caribbean. So I just really wanna say that the Caribbean is on a path to recovery. We must take that path because we want to strengthen our communities. We want to strengthen the people of the Caribbean and we want to ensure that we have the type of environment that can, that can weather all the elements that we could face. So please connect with us on social media, follow us on hashtag Caribbean Dreaming. And it's a hard time for everyone, but whatever we can do to help you to remain as experts, we will continue to do. So that's my presentation on behalf of the Caribbean Tourism Organization UK chapter. Thank you. Wow, thank you, Carol. That was fantastic. And you was a couple of minutes short as well. So um, <laughs> if you have got any questions, um, now is a great time to answer. But I think, to be fair, we should maybe do the questions right at the end. Um, oh, Darren is, is on. Thank you, Karen. Carol, brilliant overview. Um, so thank you. Um, I mean, the, the, the key things that I've sort of picked up from that is about the selling, the dreaming, the sharing, the, the hashtag, the Caribbean strong and, and the hashtag Caribbean dreaming. So which is exactly what a lot of the agents are doing at the moment. Um, so keep, keep doing everything. Um, you can see we've got the support from everybody here. Um, so thank you. Thank you, Carol. Um, Torrance, I'm just going to um, unmute you now as well. Um, There we go. Torrance, can you hear? Um, can you unmute yourself? Because I can't. Ah, here we go. Perfect. So, um, are you ready now, Torrance? Because I'd like to introduce you. I'm ready. Perfect. Um, so everybody, um, I don't think Torrance doesn't need much introduction, um, but Torrance um, is here on behalf of Jamaica for us today. So go ahead, Torrance, um, tell us your information. I get my screen up first, don't I? Yeah. Perfect, we can see. Brilliant. Well, thanks for inviting us along to the Caribbean corner. Uh, we know some of you are fans of Jamaica, and this update will be mainly a catch-up. But those of you who are new, this information about the destination will help you to understand better why we are the heartbeat of the world. Let me introduce our team. I'm Torrance Lewis, you see me there on the left, and Donovan Donaldson is our Business Development Officer of the South, and Shanika Bennett is our Business Development Officer for the north. So where is Jamaica? Uh, Jamaica is smack bang in the middle of the Caribbean. We're surrounded by the Caribbean Sea and we are about an hour and a half from flying time from Florida. We're the third largest Caribbean island, about 11,000 square kilometers. Our capital is Kingston. Our tourism capital is Montego Bay. And we, we speak English 
and the 2.8 million people are warm, friendly, and very tourism focused. Getting to the island is quite easy. There are direct services from Gatwick, Birmingham, and Manchester. We've got two service scheduled carriers, Virgin and BA, that go from London, and TUI, who operates from several regional airports as well. Jamaica probably was one of the first destinations in the Caribbean to have online immigration forms and self-service kiosks at the airport. So the whole experience of going through the airport is relatively easy. To make it even more easy, we have a company called VIP Attractions that offers a club service with a fast track, systems with luggage, and on the outbound part, a lovely lounge where you can go and have snacks and drinks and it's a great service to sell to clients and it's commissionable. So on to our major resorts. Montego Bay is our main tourism center. It's, we call it the complete resort. It's the home of our Sangster International Airport. Hotels are mainly 10 to 30 minutes away. You've got great golf there, some amazing shopping and some attractions and restaurants that are generally about five miles, no more than from your hotel location major cruising destination as well. They come to Jamaica for the authenticity and for the culture and the natural beauty. So who, who is Jamaica best suited to? Well, it's great for romance, Montego Bay in particular. It's great for families in multi-generational groups. It's great for golf and a, a, a fantastic choice of resorts. If you dine out, if you want to dine out, Montego Bay is fantastic and it's particularly good for people who are young and looking for great nightlife. We home port a, a UK-based ship, Tui's Morella, Cruises has a Discovery 2 based in Montego Bay. So if you want to sell a cruise and stay in Jamaica, that's who you go through. And Montego Bay has great natural adventure. So these attractions, plantation houses, taking the horses into the sea, zip wiring, quad biking, off the road experiences. Montego Bay has it all. Then we move on to Negril, which is 90 minutes from Montego Bay to the west. It's famous for its stunning seven mile beach. It's got a wide range of accommodation and it's great for sun worshippers. It's all about the beach and the sunsets and nightlife in the grill. People who wanna dine out will find lots of interesting places to go on the beach. Again, the beautiful water, the warm climate makes it good for sun worshippers. Families will enjoy the grill, but young people also will find it really, really entertaining. It's good for cliff divers, People who are into water sports, the best diving in Jamaica is in Negril. And if you want to go down to the South Coast, it's the best place to base yourself. That's an aerial view of our seven miles of beach. It's stunningly beautiful, flat and calm, and the perfect place to enjoy a, a beach vacation. These are some of the attractions, Rick's Cafe down at the West End. Catamaran cruises are very popular for that amazing sunset. And we've got a, a beach park, Island Lux Beach Park in Negril, which is unique in that it's got all of this amazing soft adventure on the water. There's some restaurants there, ice cream bar and so on. So if you want a bit more hype than just the natural beach of Negril, Island Lux Beach Park is where you go. Our third main resort, which I want to tell you about is called Ocho Rios. And Ocho Rios is in the center of the island. It's the centerpiece of Jamaica. It's about an hour from Montego Bay and Kingston has over 30 attractions within a 10 mile radius and is great for families. Great for weddings as well, with all the activity in that sort of area. It really makes for amazing family holidays and has a fantastic choice of resorts that you can send your clients to. That's an aerial view of the town. And here are some of the attractions. The famous Duns River Falls, where you can climb from the beach to the top. We've got a place called the Mystic Mountain where you go up in a ski lift and you come down in a bobsled or you can go zip wiring or river rafting on the white river jamaica really does have so many activities over 175 attractions on the island quad biking and great craft markets for you to go and engage with the local people most of you know that we're looking forward to the new james bond film later on in the year james bond was created in jamaica and the stunning Golden Eye is the home where Ian Fleming wrote all the books, and that's located in the Ocherius area. So quickly on to, now to our festivals. We've got music festivals throughout the year. We've got athletics events that people can get involved in if your clients are marathoners or mini marathoners. 
There are lots of things that they can engage with in Jamaica. Amazing culinary events. Jamaica probably is the culinary capital of the Caribbean for authentic flavor. Jerk comes from Jamaica, ackee and sawfish. Things that you see and can get here in the UK quite easily are all available through festivals in Jamaica. And it's a great way to find a good time for somebody who's a foodie to go out and experience the destination. We are probably one of the best romance and wedding destinations in the Caribbean. If you want to get married on a beach, you want to get married at a waterfall. Oops. <laughs> Or if you want to have a seaside wedding, these can all be achieved quite easily. And there's no blood test required. And you only have to have a 24 hour residency in order to get married on the island. Onto our Jamaica Rewards program, which is our, our travel agent program. We host both an online light learning program on the Jamaica Rewards site with MBR. And we also provide rewards through MBR under the Jamaica Rewards banner. At the moment, we're offering five pounds per booking. That's going to change in this new scenario going forward. We're gonna have some amazing new incentives when everything comes back. But the Jamaica Rewards program on jamaicarewards.co.uk is where we offer all of our learn and earn opportunities. And for those of you who are regulars to this program, it's all about receiving cash rewards and learning about the destination. So when this has all passed, we're going to take our Feel the Beat Roadshow out to the UK. So, so many of you are eager to hear about what Jamaica has to offer. And we'll be visiting Glasgow, Manchester, Birmingham, London, and Cardiff. It was an event we had planned for, for last month. And obviously, we had to postpone but we will be coming out as soon as we can realistically do so to share with you all the best information and tell you more about what Jamaica has to offer. And if things allow for us, we will be doing trips sometime later in the year. These are some of the dates that we ha had held. It may not be those, but rest assured, we will be getting agents out to Jamaica to see all of the things that have been put in place to ensure that your clients when they visit Jamaica will have a wonderful, safe experience. So over the next few weeks and months, I can assure you, we will be engaging with you, providing you with updates about the assurances you need to give to your clients about travel, travel generally and travel to Jamaica. But for now, look out for communications from us directly and through MBR about a series of webinars that we're going to be doing and launching that are going to be very specific and very niche to segments about Jamaica. It'll be fun, it'll be engaging, and hopefully we can talk some more. So until we meet again, thank you very much, and over to you guys. Thank you so much, Torrens. Um, I don't know about anybody else, but while you were sharing all of your photographs with us, I was sat dreaming and daydreaming and thinking, wow, I wish I was on that beach now drinking my rum cocktail um, and eating my jerk chicken. So thank you very, very much for the presentation. Um, so now we have um, Lisa, the lovely Lisa, um, that's going to tell us all about Grenada and she's already got the backdrop behind her. Um, so Lisa, please go ahead, take your, take your stage. Of course, and thank you, Sarah, for the introduction. Let me just get this up, guys. Bear with me one second. I like your earrings. <laughs> thank you, my love. I had to. I had to. It feels weird wearing lipstick and stuff, but hey, from the waist <laughs> up, I look like this. <laughs> okay, so here we go. So... <sighs> We are in very unusual times right now, so I won't dwell too much on it, but the Caribbean and what I loved, what Carol was talking about, that we have had a lot of positive things that have happened to the Caribbean overall as a region. And once this has settled down, then you know that the Caribbean is gonna be booming again. We just need your support. 
So without further ado, I would like to welcome you to Pure Grenada, Karakou and Pity Martinique. Yes, we are a tri-island state. And as I like to say, we have two sisters. Now, we already know about getting there. At the moment, you know that that's not possible. Grenada does have 110,000 people and our government are trying to protect them at the moment because we are seeing the figures across the world when it comes to the virus. So you can understand why it is important for a small island that has that population to take, um, as I love, like what my CEO said, um, pro proactive, aggressive measures. And that's what we're doing right now. So there is um, curfews and lockdowns at the moment. Um, as we just get a handle on this. It's not to say that we have the same cases as around the world, but we don't want to get there. And it's always nice to um, amp ahead as opposed to wait until it comes on your doorstep <laughs> to do anything about it. Now, our Ministry of Tourism and the lovely people that I work with at Grenada Tourism Authority, we are reviewing plans and preparing for a renewed tourism industry. So please be rest assured that when we do reopen um, our borders, then we will have more, a better, a better. It's always nice to enhance things. Um, portfolio for tourism from our hotels to everything that we offer in terms of products, etc. Um, at the moment, I don't actually have a date for when we will reopen the borders. I guess with everybody around the world, it is one of those that we are taking it day by day. Um, what's nice about Grenada is that we are below the hurricane belt. Um, we know that hurricane season starts about the 1st of June. So as Carol mentioned, which was lovely, is that yachting, we're more likely going to see yachting come to our shores. Um, and that in itself, there are yachts still around the region. So if anything, Grenada will definitely be a perfect place um, to have those yachts settle there. But yet, but let me stress this, that that is down to our Ministry of um, Health um, to assess and then see when that happens. But we're going to remain positive. Let's see what June says. Um, I won't bore you with the details. You, I just wanted to say that we still got Virgin Atlantic and British Airways. So they will be flying when they can. Now, this is where we're going to go. Let's move it on. Let's talk about some dreaming. This is a lovely initiative by the CTO UK. And the Caribbean Dreaming promotion is online and it started from April and it's due to run until the 1st of June. And I think it explains the Caribbean as a whole. I think Sarah, in particular, she's always saying dreaming. So it's just a natural thing to say. And with all the beautiful scenery that we have in the Caribbean, we are constantly dreaming. So hence why we have Grenada dreaming. But we will also, as you can see, it is about including hashtag Grenada um, Caribbean dreaming as well as one dreaming. And what we know, and I'm sure that you guys, um, for those that have experienced Grenada, what we would like you to do is please share in your best experience of your visits, whether it was on a fam trip or whether it was for personal reasons. It's always good to post and keep sharing because while we dream about travel, the colours, the vibrancy, the stories from Grenada should bring some much escapism in these times we are in, and that's what we want to offer. So hashtag Grenada Dreaming, hashtag Caribbean Dreaming, hashtag One Caribbean. And if you at Discover Grenada, tag us, then we'll definitely repost and engage with you. So when we do open, please be assured you are gonna see this scenery. You're gonna get to know that the capital, St. George's, will be vibrant and buzzing once again um, in terms of the cruise from um, going to visit our forts. We do have Fort Frederick, so you can see what Grenada was and what it is now. So you have that. Our spice market, I think if anybody's been to Grenada, you know that the spice market is one of our signature things. It smells like Christmas every day. And once we do reopen and you step off that plane or boat or whatever it may be for your clients as well as for yourselves, because I'm sure you're going to want to break too, then you will be greeted with the cinnamon, the nutmeg and everything that we have there. 
gardens of Grenada. Yes, unfortunately, we cannot do Chelsea um, this year, but um, we was hoping to win 16 gold, but we understand. At the moment, we just want to show you that the gardens right now, they're blossoming. They're doing their own thing. Nature, if anything, is taking its own course because we are all tucked away. So they're the ones that's breathing and if anything, enjoying the outdoors at the moment. So that hopefully for 2021, we do enter that lovely competition again. And then in the north part of the island, you will be able to engage. And if you didn't know, then now you know that we still, we do have river tubing. We have Grenada High Wire. For those that don't know what Grenada High Wire is, if you've done Go Ape before, literally think of it as an adult playground where you are climbing through trees. And I think what, from a personal point of view, and what probably a lot of people are going to think about is that we need to live more <laughs> and we need to just appreciate in the moment so when you do go to our islands go to grenada clients get them out there adventure enjoying as well as yourself if anything life is too short so we should just be enjoying every aspect of it and then if you didn't know diving and snorkeling we have the first for the underwater sculpture park so i'm sure the oceans right now they are taking the time to breathe so the the seas itself true blue bay they're sending a lot of pictures on their social media how the ocean itself is looking very healthy so that in itself is going to be lovely to see once we reopen and there you go with the diving and snorkeling furthermore we want to talk about what we are doing now because I feel this is relevant because we know in the UK that everybody went mad and got their sanitizers did they not and run out and toilet paper and the list continues but what I love about my people is that they are bringing the Grenadian spirit we could be drinking a lot of rum but why not the local rum and gin companies produce mass quantities of hand sanitizer and we have Grenada Distillery, Blue Light Gin and Westerhall doing exactly that. So this is really good and they're sharing it um, with people that are more vulnerable so and outside too. Of course when borders open and you can send things then we will keep it going and hopefully this will be something that we can see in the UK. <clears throat> Hotel side. Yes, there is a lot, if not all our hotels are closed at the moment, but they are posting quite a bit on their social media from our three star to our five star properties. They are looking forward to welcoming the guests, but I like when they say from new faces to repeat friends, because right now humanity is at its high and we are all in this together. So I just wanted to give you some more visuals just to know what your clients can look forward to with the hotel side. And then, did you know? More things, because I'm sure people are bored at home. Misbehavior. If you didn't see it, if you don't know anything about it, I'm not gonna give too much away, but just know that it's based on our Miss Grenada who won the pageant back in the day. Her name is Jennifer Hoston. Um, there's many other interesting things that happened during this movie but I won't give it away. All I'm asking you to do is if you're into your films, you want something to watch, then this film itself is av available on Amazon Prime, Sky Store and iTunes. So I will just leave you to think what else could happen during this film. <laughs> Lastly, but not least, we do have our rewards scheme, Grenada Ambassador Rewards. I know for a lot of you, you have logged your bookings and I appreciate you doing that. Due to the hotel closures, we are not able to approve them, but we are sending out some lovely kind gestures to you at this time. And then when you are able to just keep logging, logging and logging, then as um, lovely Torrance said, and I'm sure everybody will be doing, we'll be reviewing our rewards because <laughs> going through the hard, Going through the dark tunnel, we need some light at the end of that. 
Okay, so if you haven't signed up, then please do take note of the addresses and please do. Um, also on another note, just to remind you that we are going to have our own um, individual webinar. So I will go into a bit more, you know, these earrings. I'm sure I'm going to wear different earrings. Let's brighten up the time. It felt very nice to put lipstick on. So you're definitely going to see some more colorful things come in and that will be taking place on the 5th of may at 2 p.m and the lovely sarah and darren and everybody at my booking rewards they will send you this invite so you can see that um is there anything else just regarding the caribbean dreaming we do have a video you can see that on YouTube as well as on social media at Discover Grenada, but we do have it. So if you would like it to keep spreading the word, hashtag Grenada Dreaming, hashtag Caribbean Dreaming, hashtag One Caribbean, then I'm more than happy to. Um, I'm Lisa B. It's been a pleasure. This is for you, the land of spice and um, smiles, spice. <laughs> and I want to thank you and please stay safe. Please stay indoors and save lives. Thank you, Lisa. Thank that you. That was very, very good. Um, I think as well, something that was just very, very current that came across is that I have seen so many hotels sharing the stories, sharing their videos, sharing the dreaming. And you can see straight away the clients that normally stay to the hotel or the clients that want to go to the hotel. You can see them sort of communicating with, with them. Um, so again, it, it is, it's just showing that the interest is certainly there across the board. So thank you. Um, thank you for the presentation. Um, and... What I will do now is I'm going to hand over to Gustavo. Um, Gustavo, thank you so much for joining us. Um, so you're going to tell us all about the Dominican Republic. Um, so I will hand over to you. So thank you. Well, hello, everyone. Um, for those of you that don't know me, Gustavo Candelario, Dominican Republic Press Board. And, uh, and yes, I'm really happy to, to join you on, on this uh, very important occasion, basically. You know, it's, it's great to hear from, from Carol, from Florence, from everyone about um, how everybody's coping, how everybody's getting ready for, for you know, to move on and, and to, to hit the, the ground running, which is what we all in the Caribbean want to do, basically. Um, about the Dominican Republic in particular, first, a little bit of, a, of an explanation of, of what's going on at the moment there. Um, basically, um, about the COVID, situation, you know, the cases are just over 3,000, um, relatively low. We're taking really, really good measures in the Dominican as well. Um, they, at the moment that we have curfews from 5 p.m. until uh, 6 in the morning, uh, and that's set to, to go all the way through to the 30th of, of April. Uh, of course, uh, depending on, on how the situation, if how much on the control uh, the situation is at the time. Um, but we are taking many precautions as well. Regarding the hotels and, and the opening times, uh, most, not most, but some of the hotels that are really important for us are planning to open in June, basically. Uh, some as early as the 1st of June, some as, as late as the 30th of June, but of course all of these are just ideas at the moment. Uh, we need to wait and see how the situation develops, but um, we are ready, you know, to, to just um, start, you know, as I said before, to, to hit the, the, the ground running basically. Um, and generally about the Dominican Republic, well, um, the Dominican Republic is in the center of the Caribbean. We have, uh, you know, we are in the island of Hispaniola. We share the island with uh, uh, Haiti. Haiti. In Haiti, they speak French Creole. In the Dominican Republic, we speak Spanish. And uh, we are two thirds of the, of the island. Haiti is one third of the island. Uh, so it's two different countries sharing one island. Uh, very easy access to the Dominican Republic. From that week, you can fly with British Airways and TUI to, uh, to Punta Cana and from Manchester with TUI to Punta Cana as well. Those are the main departure ports from, from the UK. Um, as you might know, um, there are a couple of very uh, well-known um, 
resorts in the Dominican Republic. On the north coast, we have the area of Puerto Plata, very famous, very popular. At the moment, we don't have a direct flight. Uh, we're working hard on that. Hopefully, after all of this uh, is sorted out, um, we can start then uh, restart um, uh, our search for a, a direct flight to Puerto Plata again. And at the moment, uh, Punta Cana, you know, all the flights are, are going down. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the Dominican Republic and, and uh, um, in the in what to see and what to do, basically. The whole of the Caribbean, you know, we have beautiful hotels, we have fantastic beaches, that's undeniable. And um, we are no exception about that. But I would like to talk a little bit more about things to see and to do experiences in the Dominican Republic, basically. Um, starting, let's start on the North Coast, Puerto Plata. It's, it's a beautiful place. Uh, Puerto Plata City is, is a lovely Victorian uh, uh, city, basically. It's full of gingerbread houses, you know, wooden gingerbread houses. It has fortresses. It's really, really nice. But as well, it has many things to see and to do around the city. In the, in the just out of the city, there's a place, we have the only co uh, cable car in the Caribbean, which is the, in Montaña Isabel Torres, sorry, I'm a little bit lost here. Okay, Montaña Isabel de Torres. And um, that cable car will take you to the top of a mountain, Montaña Isabel de Torres, and then from the top, you have an incredible view of Puerto Plata City and the Atlantic uh, Ocean as well. It's a, it's a beautiful experience and something that we strongly recommend. Near Puerto Plata as well, we have a place called Damahawa, where you, you have 27 consecutive waterfalls. One, and you can jump from one to the next, to the next, to the next. It's a lovely experience. Very close uh, from there as well in Jarabacoa, you can go white water river rafting. Um, great experience. In Puerto Plata, of course, you can visit our Rome distilleries. Uh, Bugar Rome distilleries open uh, for the public, and it's, it's a great experience. The Dominican Republic as well is a, a number one hand grown cigar um, producer in the world and you can definitely visit plenty of the factories uh, which most of them are located in the center of the island and close uh, to Puerto Plata as well. So that's another experience. In Puerto Plata City itself you, can, you have places like the Amber Museum that you can visit really really nice and um, and for, for cruising, you know, Amber Cove, uh, the state, uh, cruise uh, port over there uh, is as well uh, very popular. Uh, uh, one of our main uh, ports is right there in Puerto Plata. Uh, so we move down a little bit to the southeast uh, of the island and then we arrive to Punta Cana. Punta Cana is a great place. Uh, yes, fantastic hotels, great beaches. But again, plenty to see and to do. In the Dominican Republic, we have about 27 national parks and reserves. And right there next to Punta Cana, you have the National Park of the East, or Potuanama, for those of you who can't pronounce that uh, Arawak name. Uh, so in, in Parque Potuanama, uh, you, can, you can visit it. And uh, we have 32 endemic species of birds in the Dominican Republic, and some of them are for you to see it right there in that park. We have as well a very popular place called Saona Island, which is the number one excursion in the, in the Dominican Republic. Uh, so you go from uh, Valle Ibe, you go on a catamaran all along the coast, beautiful uh, views of the national park from the arrive to the island, and then of course your lovely buffet and miles and miles of white sanded beaches for you to enjoy. And then on the way back, you go back on a, a speedboat. It's really, really nice experience. Apart from that, Punta Cana is huge with golf. Golf is something that we, you know, we are one of the biggest destinations in the Caribbean for golf. We've been awarded several times as, as number one uh, golf destination for Latin America and the Caribbean. Uh, and in Punta Cana, you will never be further away of a golf course more probably you will be cr as close as 20 minutes the further that you will be from a golf course and we have several golf courses like Punta Espada, Corales, uh, we have these of the dock in, in near in, in La Romana and the, the PGA Golf, American PGA 
uh, golf tour stops every year in Los Corales in Punta Cana. So that's uh, how big we, we have become in, in, in golf and every one of your clients can go and enjoy these amazing golf courses that we have in the area. Around 23 golf courses in Punta Cana area only. So, we moved from Punta Cana and we arrived to Santo Domingo, a very special place, not only because I was born and raised there, but it's, it's authentically a beautiful place. Santo Domingo is the first European uh, city of the Americas and uh, basically has the first everything, the first cathedral, uh, the first page trees of the Americas, the first tavern, the first fortress. It's really a, an incredible place and, and we recommend travelers not just go for a, you know, of course, you can go for a day tour and enjoy the beautiful colonial streets of Santo Domingo for a day, but we would prefer travelers to try and do a twin center, could be with Punta Cana, could be with La Romana, and try and stay one or two nights in Santo Domingo. It's beautiful, full of uh, uh, cultural activities all week around. Every Sunday, there's a place next to a lovely ruin of a monastery where uh, everybody get together and dance together uh, with live music uh, called Bonje, uh, a nice song band. It's an incredible experience. Every time we take um, fun trips, we take them there as well, and they really, really enjoy that authentically Dominican experience. Um, so we leave Santo Domingo, and uh, we go north uh, east to a place called Samana, which is a magical place. Samana is um, again everywhere in the Dominican you're really close to national parks and right there you have Los Aikises National Park, National Parks which is an amazing uh, place to visit uh, where you can have a glance at the uh, Ridgeway uh, Hawk which is an endangered species of bird and we are doing a great effort and we, th we think we're getting very good results uh, on maintaining the species uh, you know thriving. Uh, in Samana as well, you can go and visit the Limon waterfall. It's, a, it's one of, you know, an incredible, beautiful waterfall. You hike on the back of a mule for a few minutes, and then you're up there in the middle of that beautiful uh, place. Um, it has amazing beaches that you can only access uh, by boat, like El Rincón. And um, I, I guess it's one of the most unspoiled places. It's, it's the Caribbean as it used to be, you know. It's, it's a beautiful place. Then, if we leave Samana, we can go to the southeast, to the area of Barahona, which is basically uh, a virgin area, you know, very off the beaten path, uh, more for people uh, orientated to the experience, to the nature, to independent traveling uh, with places like uh, Bahia de las Aguilas, which is a beautiful uh, uh, beach that is completely apart from everything. Uh, Lake Enriquillo is the um, the lowest point of the Caribbean, 44 meters on the sea level, and there you, you will find uh, incredible crocodiles, iguanas, it's a magical place as well. And apart from the lowest place in the Caribbean, the Dominican have the highest mountains of the Caribbean as well, like Pico Duarte, 3,000 meter height, you will need about two days to get to the top, so you know, you have to be prepared for it. Uh, incredible views from top of the highest mountains in the whole of the Caribbean. Um, other very important things that goes in the Dominican Republic is the, is the well washing season it takes place every winter from uh, January until March. We get about 4,000 humpback wells on the northeast of the Dominican Republic, and you can easily go and visit on excursions. Um, so, yeah, this is just uh, a small glance of the Dominican Republic. I hope you enjoy it. You can always uh, go to our OTT. A training program, take a look at it, it's really good. Uh, uh, most of the time we have prices and, and, and opportunities for fun trips uh, when you finish your OTT program. Um, our website is really complete, goldominicanrepublic.com, it's really, really complete, it's great. And something that is coming out really soon is these three incredible little videos that we made with uh, the help of uh, Monty Holtz, the marine bio biologist and adventurer. And they will be out really soon. And um, I wanted to show you one or two today, but unfortunately it's, it's, not, uh, uh, it's not possible to show it today. Uh, but thanks for your time. You know, we are available all the time, uk at goldominicanrepublic.com. 
uh, please let us know if you need any information, any help. And, you know, looking forward for the whole of the Caribbean to hit the ground running. So thank you, guys. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, just, to, just a query, um, with the videos, is it something that I can share or is it, is it that they're not ready or can I send them out, email them out to everybody? After we will finished? make them available to you. We will make them available to you so you can, we can show everyone, yes. Oh, okay, perfect. Okay, great. So I'll get them sent out to everybody um, by tomorrow anyway. Um, just um, in terms of questions, um, has anybody got any questions? I can see a couple coming in now. Um, we've got Lauren um, who's asked, um, sorry I missed the start of the webinar, so this may have been answered. We've got clients weighing up Montego Bay and Ochoas Rios. Um, what are the main draws of each? So this is aimed at Torrance. Um, Torrance, can you sort of give us a bit of an overview as to Montego Bay over Ochoas Rios? Okay, great. Well, thanks for that question. Montego Bay, the benefit is a very short transfer time. So if they're looking for the shortest possible time after landing to be in resort and having the first cocktail, then Montego Bay ticks that box. It's a city, so it's a slightly more cosmopolitan and authentic feel, which if they are younger clients who want to get out and about in the evening, they'll find lots of places to dine out and great nightlife. Whilst Ocho Reyes is more laid back, it's 90 minutes from the airport, so it's a slightly longer transfer. But what it does have in its advantage is that it has lots and lots of world-class attractions. All of the things that you would want to do in Jamaica, ride the bobsled, climb Dungeon for Falls, go river rafting, visit Bob Marley's museum, can all be achieved quite easily by staying in the Ocho Rios area. It's very lush, it's very green, as the name suggests. Ocho Rios means eight rivers, and Dungeon Falls is one of the, the five that are there. So it's a question of whether they want to be active or they want to be laid back and in a place near to airport, but with a city feel. Get in contact with us. We're, we are all working, Shanika and Donovan. Uh, who was the agent? Sorry, I didn't get the name. Lauren, Lauren Coleman. Lauren Coleman. <coughs> well, Lauren, set, send us an email and we'll be happy to provide you with as much information as you need. But thank you for that question. Perfect. Thank you very much, Torrens. Um, Gustavo, we've got a question for you. Um, Jenny Jackson's just asked, are there still direct flights from the UK to Samana? Uh, no, unfortunately, we don't have flights to Samana. Uh, right now, there are no flights, zero flights, of course, but uh, when everything comes back, there are several ways where you can, uh, you can get to Samana. Uh, you can go via the United States, it's really easy. Some, some, there are some flights that are direct to, to, the, to Samana. Um, and from the Dominican Republic, uh, sorry, from uh, uh, what you can do is you, you can fly to Punta Cana and maybe stay one night in La Romana and they go to Samana. Uh, if you want to go direct to Samara from Punta Cana, it will take you about uh, four hours. So it's doable if, if, if they know what, 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 what uh, they're going to do, or they just can stay one night in a Romana or Santo Domingo and they go further to Samara. Perfect. Thank you very much. That's answered that question. Um, we've got another question as well, um, which is going to go to pretty much everybody. Um, Angela Williams is asking, um, we, you know, with regards to clients that are still over in the Caribbean, is there going to be any rescue flights to bring people back? Um, so she's obviously got a couple of clients that are over, um, stuck over there at the moment. Um, have you got any updates on that? Um, Sarah, a couple, of, a couple of other questions have come up in the boxes about health and safety. So first of all, let, let's take the issue of yeah. rescue flights. Um, to my knowledge, the airlines are not um, resuming flights until the end of May, early June. Yeah. So we cannot say when rescue flights will resume. Now, part of this is because of a question that Donna Joseph has asked as well, and it's about health and safety. Now, we all know that so far an injection has not yet been developed that they're satisfied with, but they're not even in the testing stages. So in a discussion that I was on earlier this week, it was suggested that once there is an injection, 
people will feel safe and confident to travel, to fly out. But my um, concern is, and this is probably shared by Donna, is that it's all good and well to say that the people flying into the Caribbean will, be, will receive the injections, but we also need to ensure that the correct health and safety protocols are also in the Caribbean. Sick staff cannot provide a service to anyone. So we in the Caribbean are also looking at injections that hopefully will be developed and other protocols. Now, the port authorities have not yet stated publicly what measures will be in place for visitors on arrival, but for sure there will be measures in place. I'm not sure if it's going to be checking temperatures. I'm not sure if they will need to have an official stamp or certificate stating that they have received the vaccination. The protocols are being worked out, but they will be spread across the Caribbean. I just want to remind the agents as well um, that the Regional Health Agency for the Caribbean is CARPHA, C-A-R-P-H-A. Google them, go onto their website because they are responsible for ensuring that um, the health policies, protocols and procedures are rolled out across the Caribbean. Um, someone else in the Q&A um, asked a question about you know, when flights will open up and updates. If you visit our website, caribbean.co.uk, and go into the member and trade section, there's no password, just click on it. Um, that we, we will have links to the Caribbean Tourism Organization, Barbados website, links to CARFA, and we're also putting up some of the releases as well from destinations. So it's really important that you check the website because that's where in the trade and member section, in the press section, we're keeping the information updated. So as soon as we hear about what the health measures are across the Caribbean, then we'll be happy to share with everyone. But the health and safety of our communities is really important. And until we are sure that mentally and physically they can deliver this business of tourism, we have to work with certain measures, as all the presenters had said before. Perfect. Brilliant. Um, also, Michael Martinez has just asked a question. Um, hello, Carol, a lovely presentation. Thank you. Do you have any ideas as to which of the Caribbean islands may open up first, i.e. will it be the bigger islands like Jamaica, Dominican, in front of the smaller islands like Antigua, Barbados, Grenada? Um, I presume that that's just been answered in the other question. Um, we don't know, um, but it's an ongoing process at the moment. Or is there, is there something... Yeah. Different. And also, um, Sarah, to, just to add, it won't be tourism that decides when the destinations open up. It will be the head of uh, their, their head of government, along with the, the, the health minister and the port authorities. It's going to be, a of course, tourism will be involved, but it's going to be a collective decision across each and every country as to when they think. So, you know, in tourism, we can say we're ready, we're ready, you know, as much as we want. On. But if health and ports authorities do not think that um, it's safe for us to open our entry, our port entries, whether it's land or sea, then then that's going to be it. And and for most of the Caribbean, when there's a crisis such as this, it isn't tourism that that leads on it. You know, we allow the other air agencies that have the trained professionals to make those decisions, and we follow suit. Perfect. Great. Um... Any other questions coming in? I don't think so. Um, just for me to sort of finalise um, on everything as well, um, I never introduced when we, when we first started about the My Caribbean Rewards, and this is ultimately what's brought everybody um, together today. Um, it's literally just been launched this week, um, and what we're going to be doing move, moving forward is the webinars every week. Um, we're going to be sort of negotiating and, and liaising with all of the different hotels, the tourist boards, um, to literally share any news, information, um, because obviously we've got the fantastic travel professional sites we've got the the great um 
Facebook sites, um, but also we've got the My Booking Rewards or My Caribbean Rewards .co.uk, which is where you can log every single Caribbean booking that you make to any destination to any hotel. Um, and weekly, um, at the moment until the end of June, um, we're going to be giving away a fifty pound prize to the top. Well, not necessarily the top booker. It's going to be picked at random. So the more bookings you make and log on the system per week, the more chance you have um, of being picked out. Um, Tomorrow, um, what I'm going to do as well is everybody that was on the um, on the webinar, um, Gustavo at the Dominican Republic um, kindly sponsored the £50 um, draw. So I will draw a name out tomorrow. Um, I'll put all your names into the computer, spin a wheel, and um, I'll do it on Facebook Live. First chance tomorrow. Um, so that will be coming from Gustavo. So Gustavo, thank you uh, for that. Um, Eric, can I just jump in a second? Of course. For the agents that are on, I just wanted to reassure them all that we took a decision to pay all the rewards to the agents that had bookings that had traveled. So everybody should have had their rewards paid to them up until till March. If there are any outstanding, they can come through to us through the admin at My Booking Rewards, but I think we have settled most, if not all, of the outstanding rewards as a gesture to the agents to say, we realize things are tough and we've decided to settle up everything, even though we aren't able to, in some instances, get verification. Perfect, thank you. That's, I'm sure that's very, very appreciated through the trade. Um, I've just had one more, like, lots of thank yous. We don't seem to have any more questions. Um, so without further ado, thank you so much to everybody uh, for coming on board and for sort of giving us an overview and the insights as to what is happening at the moment. Um, if you have, as from the sort of the supplier point of view, if you've got anything that needs sharing, let me know and I can attach that to the email that will go out to all of the attendees tomorrow. Um, so if you can get that to me by close of business today. Um, and to the trade, thank you. Keep doing what you're doing and um, we will chat to you next week so thanks a lot bye all bye bye thank you, thank you. Bye -bye. thanks stay safe